गदाधर शिवा सदिगौर भक्त वृंद हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे दियर डिवोट इज डूइंग भक्ति वे भव विथ माया पुर इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ एजुकेशन यू आर वेलकम फॉर कंटिन्यूटी ऑफ भक्ति वे भव स्टडी ऑफ फर्स्ट कैंटो श्रीमद भागवतम चैप्टर फिफ्थ फोर्टीन इज टू so yesterday we discussed something about uh, maharaj yudhishthir so uh, observing some inauspicious omens and the bottom line was it was all because of the lord krishna's departure back to his own abode so the principle is that simply the principle we can drive from this is that as long as we are connected with krishna there is everything auspicious as soon as we are disconnected with krishna everything will be inauspicious very simple so when maharaj yudhishthir was discussing with uh, his younger brother bhimsen about the inauspicious uh, all happenings in his kingdom and all these omens are on earth in the sky in the body in the mind in the animals there are the different uh, uh, inauspicious omens he observed and then he from within his heart he was very much convinced that dr uh, that uh, as narad rish devrishi narad has told krishna must have Uh, uh actually close his past time on the earth but is still uh, 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 when he was thinking like that arjun arrived and arjun was very much uh, com- so dejected and depressed and completely worried so mara yudhishthir asked about the well being of all yadu vanshis from him and ultimately he asked about krishna so then still arjun was not able to speak because he was completely devastated because of separation from krishna so now maharaj yudhishthir in this section from 39 verse onward is asking the different reasons the possible cause for arjun's dejection arjun's uh, moroseness and principally speaking for any gentleman today if we apply except one or two are still the criteria for a person to be a gentleman so let's start reading verse number 39 kechitte anamyam tat से अनामय से आमय इज अ डिजीज अनामय इज अ हेल्थ इज युअर हेल्थ ऑल राइट भ्रष्ट तेजा विभासी में आई कैन सी ऑल युअर लस्टर विभ्रष्ट you are bereft of all your luster alabdha mano the first reason in this verse is alabdha mano avagyata kim va tat chiroshita uh, it is that you stay long time with our relative at dwarka and therefore they have actually not given given you in you were neglected not properly respected so this is one reason so my brother arjun please tell me whether your health is all right you appear to have lost your bodily luster is this due to other disrespect respecting and neglecting you because of your long stay at dwarka so principle is that if you we stay long time with our friends or relatives 
uh, then definitely the family breeds contempt and always there are little negligence and disrespect. So this is one of the reason because seven months is a long time. So this is one reason. Uh, well, one may be the reason. So one should not really too, be to become too much burden on the friends and uh, relate to otherwise you will be disrespected and belittled. So in six verses, so 39 till 44. In six verses, Yudhishthira Maharaj asked about welfare of Arjun, who was not speaking. Anamya means health, we are, where you, say, were you staying there a long time? Chiro Shitaha. Not respected by your friends or more than that, disrespected by them. Say so one is not, uh, uh, neglected, other is disrespected. Both one is uh, little uh, lower. Neglected is lower. Disrespected is more severe. So Srila Prabhupada writes, uh, from all angles of vision, Maharaj uh, Yudhishthira inquired from Arjun about the welfare of Dwarka. But he concluded at last that as long as Lord Krishna himself was there, nothing in auspicious could happen. This is the principle. But at the same time, Arjun appeared to be bereft of his bodily luster, and thus the king inquired of his personal welfare, Arjun's personal welfare, and asked so many vital questions. So first vital question is, staying too long with friends always result in some sort of negligence and disrespect. Verse 40 has another reason. Kechin na abhihato abhavahi shabdadi bhi amanglahi nadatam muktam arthi bhyaha ashayayata pratishrutam The second reason for somebody being morose, lusterless, has someone addressed you with unfriendly words? Are threatened you? Could you not give charity to one who asked or could you not keep your promise to someone? There are three reasons in this. There are two reasons in verse 39 about the health itself and about the negligence or disrespect by long standing with friends. Now the verse 40 has three reasons. Please, somebody's microphone is disturbing. So what are the three reasons in this? Unfriendly treatment and threatened by somebody. Not given charity to a, according to time, place and uh, the per person or patra, desh kal patra. Or you were not able to keep your promise to someone. Three things. Were you beaten abhihattaha by words without love? Abhavaihi. See, it is general saying that the wound caused by arrow will heal. But the see, arrow is called in a, in a Sanskrit or Hindi barn. The, the wound by barn or arrow will heal. But the wound by bani, which means the words never heals. There is more disrespectful and painful so have somebody beaten you with uh, words without love disrespectful words money did no second did you give did you fail f fail to give what you promised to person who were wanting Arthibhya, usually chatri are charita charitable and people as a, I mean, so they think it is a, uh, a, that they go and ask for some charity and they always are charitable. So if he's not able to give charity, then he, he must be feeling leery, sorry. And third is something with a desire, ashaya, to attain it. And did you remain silent? It means you did not say yes or no. So these are the reasons Srila Prabhupada writes, a Kshatriya or a rich man is sometimes visited by persons who are in need of money. So usually Vaishya and Kshatriya, 
They both are charity. Charity for them. When they are asked for donation, it is the duty of a possessor of wealth to give in charity in consideration of a person, place and time. Three things. Desha Kala Patra. If a Kshatriya or a rich man fail to comply with this obligation, he must be very sorry for his discrepancy. Similarly, one should not fail to keep his promise to give in charity. These discrepancies are sometimes cause of despondency. This is despondency. And thus failing, a person becomes subjected to criticism. And which might also be the cause of Arjun's plight. And this is not. Now the verse 41 has other reason. Ke chetvam brahmanam balam gam vridham roginam istriyam sharano pasristam sattvam Natayakshi Hacharana Pradaha. There are five subjects in this verse. You are always the protector of deserving living beings, such as Brahman, children, cow, woman, and disease. Could you not give them protection when they approach you for shelter? This is the another reason for a respectable Kshatriya. If he is not able to give protection to deserving people, he will be dejected. And this despondence. That is the re another reason. Sharana Upasnesham means surrendered. Sattva means living beings. So the Brahman who are always engaged in researching knowledge for society's welfare work, both material and spiritual, deserve the protection of a king in all respects. Similarly, the children of the state, the cows, the diseased person, woman, and the old man specifically require the protection of the state. Or a Kshatriya king. If Sapta living beings do not get protection by Kshatriya or royal order or by the state, it is certainly shameful for the Kshatriya or a state. If such things had actually happened to Arjun Maharaj, Yudhishthira was anxious to know about these disappearances. These are not also reasons in case of Arjun. Of verse 42, we speak of another reason. Gamyan vasat kirtam sriyam prajito va atha bhavan. This is another reason. Na uttamai na shamai patihi. So, first is about the uh, unpeachable woman, and other is about are you being defe defeated by low or equal. The two, two more reasons. Have you contacted a woman of impeachable character or have you not properly treated a deserving woman? Or have you been defeated on the way by someone who is inferior or equal to you? This is one of the reasons. Arjun will say in the next chapter, yes, you asked me about defeated. Yes, I was defeated by some gopas. They were not equal to me. They are inferior, but I was defeated. So this is one of the reasons. There are two sentences in this first line. Asat kirtam means with contaminated clothing and other items. Asmahi means person lesser in strength. And nauttamai means by those inferior in caste. So Srila Prabhupada is writing a little uh, social system at that time. He's giving information. It appears from this verse that during the time of Pand was free contact between man and woman was allowed in certain conditions only. The higher caste men, namely the Brahman and Kshatriya, could accept a woman of Vaishya and Shudra community. But a man from the lower caste could not contact a woman of the higher caste. Even a Kshatriya could not contact a woman of Brahmana caste. The wife of Brahman is considered one of the seven mothers. So who are, what are, say, who are the seven other mothers? This says here. Can you see the seven other mothers? Namely, one's own mother, wife of the spiritual master, teacher, wife of the Brahman, the wife of the king, cow, nurse, and the earth. These are the seven mothers for everybody. Such contact with men and women are known as Uttam and Adham. The other words sometimes we'll see Pratilom and Anulom marriages uttam and adham contact brahman with kshatriya woman is uttam 
but the contrary of Kshatriya with a Brahman woman is Adam. Therefore condemned. A woman approaching a man for contact should never be refused. But at the same time, the discretion as above mentioned may also be considered. Now Prabhupada is giving some, Shri Prabhupada is giving some example. Bhima was approached by Hidamba from a community lower than Shudra. And he accepted. And Gatotra was born. Yayati refused to marry a daughter of Shukaracharya because it is Adham. Uh, Shukaracharya is a Brahman. Yayati is Kshatri. But somehow it happened. This is a rare case. Vyasadev the Brahman was called to beget Pandu and Dhritarashtra by Niyog uh, from the wife of Chitra Angad and Vichitra Veer. Satyavati belonged to a family of fishermen, but Parasar, the great Brahman, begot in her Vyasadeva. So there are so many examples of contact with women, but in all cases the contact were not abominable, nor were the result of such contact bad. Now, what is the bad contact? Prabhupada writes, contact between men and women is natural, but that also must be carried out under regulative principles, so that Social conservation may not be disturbed or unwanted worthless population be increased for the unrest of the world. There should not be Varn Shankar. It is abominable for the Kshatriya to be defeated. Now this, this marriage, the first two lines of the verse purport is over. Now the second two lines purport. So the next line, it is abominable for a Kshatriya to be defeated by one who is inferior in his strength or equal in his strength. If one is defeated at all, he should be defeated by some superior power. Arjun was defeated by Bhisham Dev. And Lord Krishna saved him from the danger. This was not an insult for Arjun because Bhisham Dev was far superior to Arjun in all ways. This is... A, the description of Kurukshetra war. So Bhisham was superior in what? In age, in respect, in his strength. But Karan was equal to Arjun. And therefore Arjun was in crisis when fighting with Karan. It was felt by Arjun and therefore Karan was killed even by crooked means. Such are the engagement of Kshatriya and Maharaj Yudhishthira inquired from his brother whether anything undesirable happened on the way home from Dwarka. Yes, this is one of the reasons. But that has a very transcendental uh, background that we will see in the next chapter. Verse 43, some other reason. Apeshwada priyaha bhum katastvam sambhojayan vridhabalkan jugishpitam karma kenchit have you not taken care of old men and boys who deserve to dine with you? Have you left them and taken your meal alone? Have you committed some unpardonable mistake which is considered to be abominable? Another reason. Now, Sri Prabhupada's purpose is about uh, Grasta Dharam of Athati are the uninvited guest. So Pratyabhunktaha means did you eat without feeding others first? So Prabhupada is actually writing purport on this line. And Akshamam means something which should not be done. So it is the duty of householder to feed first all the children and old members of the family. The Brahmans and the invalids. Beside that, an ideal householder is required to call for any uncommon hungry man to come and dine before he himself goes to take his meal. So one Grasta, when married, Prabhupada arranged their marriage and then asked Prabhupada what is the advice for Grasta. And Prabhupada said this thing, before you eat, you stand at the gate and call if anybody is hungry, you feed him and then you eat. But now, practically speaking, it's not practical. People are living on 11th floor, 20th floor. How can just they shout from the top there who is hungry? It's not practical. 
the other aspect is that everybody is hungry in the institute you call the uh, you will have a hundreds of people and it is not possible to practically do that so how can we still apply this uh, principle that every householder should at least keep aside enough ration for one or two persons and at the end of month they should go and hand over this uh, ration to a place where they are feeding the needy people or some respectful even guest like in temples we have always always prasad going on food for life so this uh, this uh, at least to feed one person a day this is the responsibility of grista and this is the, and this is actually the old vedic system by which the temples used to feed the guests still i know many places the the householder they used to send one person worth of food cooked into the temple and the temple have all that food collected and those who are coming as a guest or beggars they just distribute that food so this is the one thing the neglect of this prescribed duty of household especially in the matter of old men and children is unpardonable now the last verse about the reason for arjun's lusterless appearance केचेद प्रेष्ट आत्मना आत्मेनाथ पृष्ट आत्मेनाथ दैट लाइन इज मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट हृदय नात्म बंधुना शून्योस्मी रहितो नित्यम मन्यसे ते अन्यथा नरोक or is it wa- that you are feeling empty of all time because you might have lost your most intimate friend lord krishna there is the real reason oh my brother arjun i can think of no other reason for you are becoming dejected there is the real reason so but i do not have such doubts about you because i know you are my brother you are gentleman and you cannot do any such uh, um, discrepancies in your um, household activities and responsibility but remembering the words of narad following is possible however that you think to yourself i am devoid of consciousness her there na fainting because of absence of my dearest friend at all time that indeed can be the only cause otherwise you should not have a flexion in your mind rook and shila prabhupada writes all in questionnaires of mara yudhishthir about the world situation was already conjectured by maharaj yudhishthir on the basis of lord krishna's disappearance from the vision of the world this was now disclosed by him because of the acute dejection of arjun so he was already guessing but now he was completely convinced that this is the reason so even though he was doubtful about it he was obliged to inquire frankly from arjun on the basis of shrinath's indication so here we have completed the chapter 15 and now we are going to the next chapter so before we go to the next chapter you have any question or comment so now mara yudhishthir has finished his speaking and arjun will not speak in between suta goswami will have a commentary on the situation of arjun in almost uh, six verses are so any question or comment uh, you have any question bank questions then you want that you want to uh, do side of rehearsal to answer those any question or comment Hey 
Hare Krishna Prabhuji, please accept my well obeisances. Yeah, Shri Lakshmi Prabhuji. Prabhuji, uh, I had a question that in the uh, context of uh, marriage, there was one uh, question I wanted to ask that still, uh, Prabhuji, should we see this the difference between a Brahmin should marry only a Brahmin or because in Kali Yuga all are Shudras. So for the purpose of marriage, should we consider this point? I think Vedic system of uh, uh, well, marriage is definitely, at least Shri Prabhupada recommended that we should have a birth chart. Marriage matching should be done at least. If it is all right, then, then it should be accepted. But it's still traditional marriage system, which is the arranged marriage by parent, is more uh, long-lasting and more uh, appropriate. And the present-day marriage of personal liking is always creating some problems. Uh, it's still traditionally the Brahmins marry, Brahmins Kshatri marry, Kshatri this is going on it's still in India, it's like that, but the the changes are also coming within the ISKCON. Generally, uh, we have, it's not by birth that they have a Varnas are by birth. So, in ISKCON, those who are initiated Brahmins, they can be accepted. The girl and boy can be accepted from that background. But it's still, I, I, really speaking, some old ISKCON devotees, Prabhupada's time, once uh, Mataji, she came in Bombay, there was a, get, let's say it's a reunion of the old Prabhupada's disciple. She was very young, 17 years when she joined ISKCON. She said marriage within this ISKCON is, you know, very, not very successful. She, she had that, and she said, I got married on the order of some leader to somebody, then, then we have to break, and then again we married, and again we break. So Kaushalya was her name, and she was her experience telling. And also we see here the, the boys in Vrindavan, they're trying to marry the Russian or Western body girls, or vice versa sometime, but some marriage do continue, but the most usually end in disaster. So it's still, personally I feel the traditional marriages are at least arranged by the parents are better. But in this case, this was the old system. And particularly for the Kshatriyas or something like that. Uh, but still, there are some good examples of also some marriages, so there is no blanket rule, but Shastra should be considered. And the one, only one thing which is definitely should be considered, there is only Vedic system, Gotar should not be same. Gotar, like the boys Gotar and girls Gotar. Gotra is our lineage from a certain Rishi. A person who is descendant of Vasisht Rishi should not marry a girl of the Vasisht Rishi. A person who is descendant of a Kaushyak Gotra of Vishwamitra should not marry the girl of Vishwamitra Gotra. Generally, this is a, at least this much at least should be observed. But this is also mostly mixing, we can see. So, Gotra was more consideration. I think in our community, I remember uh, at the when the the marriage was over, then the Brahman used to announce that the father of the boy is from this gotra, his grandfather is this, this gotra, his uh, maternal grandfather of this gotra. Then he used to tell the gotra of the girl's side all, and then he said this is bona fide marriage, and this is the and publicly it was announced. So, but that system is, uh, I think, completely dwindling now. Even when Lord Ramachandra was marrying with Sita, then uh, on behalf of Maharaj Dasrat Vashishta, 
told the whole genealogy of Lord Ramchandra in his Gotra and his descendant from Ikshvaku. And then Maharaj Janak on his own started speaking about his lineage from Maharaj Nimi. So this was a tradition, but I think Kali Yuga, at least, at least it says the boy should girl or marry a girl. Now it has come to that stage. It can, it should not go l lower than that. And that is also appearing in the world. So I think most of the things are deteriorated to enough uh, lower level that there is no much uh, scope for going lower than that. Okay, we should start you, chapter 15. The chapter entitled Pand was retired timely. So Sutta Goswami is starting Evam Krishna Sakha Krishno. Very beautiful, you know, poetical. Krishna Sakha. The friend of Krishna. Krishno, another name of Arjun. Bhratra Ragya Vikalpitaha. Different inquiries by his elder brother, Maharaj Yudhishthar. Nana Sankha Spadam Rupam. Krishna Vishleshaha. Karshitaha. So, Sutta Goswami said, Arjun, the celebrated friend of Lord Krishna, was grief striking because of his strong feeling of separation from Krishna. Over and above, all Maharaj Yudhishthar speculative inquiries. Because such inquiries was increasing his pain of separation. In 15th chapter, Hearing the lamentation of Arjun and seeing the entrance of Kali, the king enthroned his grandson Parikshat and giving up the kingdom, marched to death with his brothers. This is called Veera Sanyas. Veera Sanyas. Arjun became the object of doubt, vikalpitha, doubt about his despondency. Why he is so dejected? For the king, Maharaj Yudhishthar. Was it because of this or was it because of that? This is like that. The cause was Arjun's worriness condition. What is the cause? He had become thin because of separation from Krishna. That was a real cause. Being too much aggrieved, Arjun practically became choked up and therefore it was not possible for him to reply properly to the various speculative inquiries of Maharaj Yudhishthar. Therefore, Sukhdev is speaking about the condition of oh, In first six words, Arjun is, Arjun's is strong feeling of separation from Krishna. So, Sutta Goswami is speaking about the condition of Arjun's uh, uh, say, uh, feeling due to separation from Krishna in first six verses. This is the first section. The second section is from 7 to 17. Arjun recalls Lord Krishna's favors and protections. So he was really recalling all the pastime which he had with Krishna. This is goes till verse 17. This is the second section. So let us finish the two sections, then we see how much we can go further. Second verse. Shokena Shushyada Vadana. His face was dry because of lamentation, bewilderment. Shokena Shoka. Hirtas Rojo Hatha Pravaha. And his lotus of his heart has lost luster. Vibham Tameva No Samaram. Na Shaknota Pradibhashitum. Due to grief, Arjun's mouth and lower like heart had dried up. Therefore, his body lost all luster. Now, remembering the Supreme Lord, he could hardly utter a word in reply. Verse 3. With great difficulty, he checked the tears of grief. That simmered his eyes. He was very distressed because Lord Krishna was out of his sight. And he increasingly felt affection for 
प्रणियो प्रणय औत कंठ्य कातर आई थिंक संस्कृत वर्ड वेन वी रीड इट इट इज रियली लाइक पाओ पर यू से देर दिस इज ट्रांसेंडल वाइब्रेशन विच विच इज दिस फूड फॉर सोल so what's for remembering lord krishna and his well wishes benefactions intimate family relation and his chariot driving arjun overwhelmed and breathing very heavily began to speak so th- this this is a little interesting starving tears of grief sucha in his eyes he wiped those tears with which flowed anyway because of krishna not being present aprokshena he was in pain sakhyam is mutual affection and mutual helping each other maitriyam is sakhya mixed with dasya and sohar is sakhya mixed with vatsalya i think these three lines of vishwanath chakravarti are better to be noted the meaning of three words sakhyam is mutual affection maitriyam is sakhyam with dasyam and sohard is sakhyam with vatsalya so this uh, these three lines are more like r- different mellows of a devotee shila prabhupada writes the supreme living being is perfect in all relations krishna with his pure devotees sri arjun is one of the typical pure devotee of lord reciprocating in parocting in fraternal relation of friendship and the lords dealing with arjuna display of friendship of higher perfect order he was not only a well wisher of arjuna but actually a benefactor and to make it still more perfect lord tried out tied him out in a family relationship by arranging subhadra's marriage with him and above all the lord agreed to become a chariot driver of arjun in order to protect him his friend from the warfare risk and the lord become actually happy when he established the pandava to rule over the world arjun remembered all these one after another and thus he become overwhelmed with such thoughts so in this purport there are a different relation of krishna with arjun not only friendship family relation of marrying subhadra with arjun then a relationship of a chariot driver for protection of arjuna in a warfare so at least four five relations are in this purport now arjuna is speaking by verse five arjuna started is speaking arjuna vacha vanchito aham maharaja maharaj yudhishthir i am bereft of harina bandhu rupina harina sri hari or oh, anybody can tell me what is the meaning of word hari at least what is the general meaning of word hari one who takes away one who takes away the troubles this is the one meaning of hari some other meaning of hari chetana mahapurusha said there are many meaning but two are most important and of the two Haru, you have the one Haru you is the heart of the devotee and is still the heart of devotee by giving a love so hari has many meaning but the two meanings are most important he take the trouble of devotee number 1 and number 2 he gives so much affection and love that he is still the heart of a devotee therefore his name is manohar manohar mano means mind har means still he is still the heart of a devotee mind of a devotee so hari na बंधु रूपेण ही वॉज रिलेटिव ये न मे अपहृतम तेजो देव संप विषमापनम महा सो दिस इज अर्जुन ही इज स्पीकिंग फर्स्ट टाइम ओ किंग महाराज द सुप्रीम पर्सन रिगार्डेड हरी हु ट्रीटेड मी एग्जैक्टली लाइक एन इंटीमेट फ्रेंड हैज लेफ्ट मी अलोन वांचितो that's my astounding power this is the reason lord left me 
and along with Lord all my power also left me. Thus my astounding power which astonished even the demigod is no longer with me. So there is this one verse and the another verse down the purport is a good advice for personal application. That whatever talent we have they are given by Krishna and we have to use it in service of Krishna. He can take and he can give and he can take away at any time when he don't need those talents to be used in service in his service. So Chakravati Pad writes Vanch, Vanchit, Vanchita means abundant. So Lord who has taken my power which were given by him. Prabhupada writes what are the powers generally Prabhupada quoting verse from 10th chapter of Bhagavad Gita verse 41 Kim bahunete na jnane na ekanse nishtito jagat Vishtabhyam vidam krishnam Anyone, anyone is specifically powerful and opulent in the wealth, strength, beauty, knowledge and all that is materially desirable is to be considered but a product of an insignificant portion of complete whole of my energy. No one therefore can be independently powerful in any measure without being endowed by the Lord. When the Lord descends on the earth, along with the eternal ever liberated associate, he not only displays the divine energy possessed by himself, but he also empower his associate devotee with the required energy to execute his mission of incarnation. It is also stated in Bhagavad Gita 4.5 that the Lord and His eternal associate descend on the earth many times. Bahuni me tav janamani ta Bahuni me janamani tav cha arjuntani ham ved sarvani na tvam vetit parantapa. That is the verse. Lord remember but the eternal associate forget. They forget. Similarly Lord take away with Him all His associate. When he disappeared from the earth, the power and energy which were bestowed upon the Arjun were